Good morning and welcome to worship for March 14th, 2021. I am the Reverend Dr. Tara Paul, Senior Pastor here at MM Park United Methodist Church, and I am so glad that you have chosen to spend some time with us worshiping today. I have just one announcement, and that is that next Sunday, weather permitting, we plan to worship outdoors in the parking lot of the church. Um, we just need you to sign up. Um, you can uh, pause the video right now and click on and go to the link. You can't really click on it, but you can go to the link. They'll be below. Um, you can also find it on our Facebook page uh, as well as in uh, Friday's newsletter um, that had the bulletin. Um, and in the bulletin, you'll also find that we have listed out some of the precautions that we are taking in order to uh, safeguard everyone's health uh, during this time. As we begin our worship service today, I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Most gracious and loving God, we are thankful as always for your presence with us, no matter where we go and where we are in this moment. We just ask that you help us to be aware of how you are moving um, through us, around us, and even despite us. Be with us, O God, as we lay ourselves open to hear from you anew and afresh on this day. It is in your holy name that we pray. Amen. I love being with people who make me laugh. And I'm sure I'm not unusual in this regard at all. I have this friend who um, is just absolutely hysterical. 
and whenever uh, we get together like we just like our humor gets all ramped up and it's just like um, it, it is kind of like like a comedy duo and people have told us that like we need to have like a stand-up routine and like be together because the way that we feed off of each other is just so much fun and so I've kind of imagined like that we're like the next you know Mary and Sue from the Great British Bake Off but I also I recognize that I'm more like Noel and I'd find myself in trouble a lot so anyway we have to be a totally different rebranded version um, despite how just absolutely hilarious my friend is um, that's not at all how she kind of presents herself on social media uh, she is a very spiritual person and she when she puts posts out they're almost always about uh, her life with God and her walk with Jesus and she has this absolute resolution that no matter what life throws at her, um, and she has a lot of health complications, um, but that matter what she goes through, that not only is God going to be there with her, but that somehow God's will is going to come to fruition and that this is all part of God's plan for her. And while we are theologically like not on the same plane, um, you know, I've known her for 20 years. We met in church before I was a minister. Uh, I have just such like adoration and at times just pure envy for the way that she just embraces life and what she's going through through the lens of faith. And so I was doing the work this week thinking about God and laughter. She is the one who came to mind. Because what's happened so often in church is that there is this like kind of a, a firm uh, belief that we are not supposed to laugh, that we're not supposed to have fun, that there's not supposed to be, you know, um, chuckles and jokes, jokes and like, you know, that like it's just supposed to be serious all of the time. And it won't surprise you to find out that I have gotten in trouble with churches before because of how I just kind of like slip in a joke here or there, you know, it just comes to my mind and I don't filter it out. Um, but this is idea that like in church we have to be serious like 24 7 um, and i think that that is completely ridiculous like we know like the benefits of laughing like the health benefits and how it releases stress and um, it helps us like get through a very difficult situation and, and we know like the social benefits of laughter um, about how it you know it helps us forge bonds and make connections with people you know and how um, laughter has like you know like some like physical benefits for us as well you know so I totally disagree with uh, Saint Jerome who was a fourth fifth century priest who um, who said that you know like we shouldn't be laughing he said you know we live in the veil of tears and so we should cry and not laugh like I just think that is completely silly and like beyond what we're supposed to be thinking about laughter um, because we need it and um, and when we talk about how God laughs and how God has this like sense of humor oftentimes we do it like in an ironic way and um, you know Alanis Morissette totally screwed up how I understand irony but I'm sure pretty sure it's irony right it's just that like oh God has a great sense of humor because what we had planned completely was thwarted and we ended up doing something completely different and the great example would be um, Tara as a pastor uh, but in some ways, this kind of like uh, laughing at the thwarting of our wills is how we see God laughing in Scripture. I mean, we also see that God was laughed at, and we will see how like in uh, Jesus in, in Luke 6 invites us to laugh um, as part of the kingdom of God. Um, but this first part about how God laughs derisively um, is really uh, troublesome to me and we see it like time and time again um, like in particular like in in the Psalms um, there are several Psalms that mention that God is laughing but when God laughs in these scriptures God laughs at humanity for trying to thwart God's will or to try to do things their own way um, and this laughter on part of God is derisive um, in tone so like here are a couple examples this is from Psalm 37 verses 12 through 13 
says the wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them but the lord laughs at the wicked for he sees that their day is coming or in proverbs 1 26 through 28 um, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you. When panic strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, then distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me and I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. And then you have the story of Abraham and Sarah that you can read about in Genesis 17 and 18. Um, and, and in this particular story that has laughter in it, um, we see that God laughs and Abraham laughs and Sarah laughs, but the three laugh in uh, very kind of different ways. So God goes in the, in the form of a human to Abraham and tells him that uh, his wife Sarah is gonna have a baby. And now they are old, like, old and when God tells Abraham this Abraham busts out laughing like he guffaws he loses it he falls on his face laughing um, and then God tells Abraham you know what you're gonna name this child Isaac which means let him laugh right so in essence God's not like he's joining in in the laughter though he's not literally technically um, laughing but he is participating in this laughter with Abraham but when Sarah hears that in her old body is going to be a baby she laughs inside and so God goes to Abraham and he's like well, why did Sarah laugh and so then Abraham goes to Sarah and Sarah he's like why did you laugh and Sarah's like I didn't laugh uh, and but there's like a judgment on her for like the laughter that she gave that was like inside and not outside. And so rabbis say that the reason why um, God approved of Abraham's laugh is because it was from joy. And the reason why God disapproved of Sarah's laugh was because it was scornful. But maybe, maybe the difference um, isn't that. Maybe the difference is, is that Abraham shared his laughter with God outside and Sarah kept her laughter to herself because you know that in the New Testament later Jesus talks about laughter and it has this connection with the kingdom of God so in Luke 6 which is kind of um, Luke's version of the Sermon on the Mount it's called the Sermon on the Plain um, and he's doing that like you know like the blesseds um, what Jesus says is that like blessed are those who weep for they will laugh which you know these are all things that are markers of when the kingdom of God comes and so laughter this conversion of our sorrow into joy a conversion of tears into laughter this is a mark of God's presence being with us as well as the kingdom um, coming amongst us and I think this is especially interesting in light of the time that Jesus was laughed at. And this story comes from Mark and Matthew's gospel. And what happens is that Jesus and his disciples, they enter a synagogue. And when they get into the synagogue, like everybody is just like wailing and they're weeping and they're super upset. Um, and, you know, and Jesus is like, hey, what's going on here? And so they're like, oh, that girl is dead. And Jesus says, oh, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. And they laugh at him, like skeptically. Um, and so he tells everybody, he kicks everybody out except for the parents. And he takes the parents over to the girl and he grabs the girl by her hands and he says, Tapitakum, or rise up, little girl. And she lives. This is a great little Easter story right here, right? So I've given you this like very cursory glance at how we see God laughing in scripture, right? We see um, God participating in laughter with Abraham. We see uh, God laughing derisively at the follies of human who are trying to do their own will instead of God's. We see God being laughed at and we see this invitation to laugh as a way to participate 
in God's work here and now um, and in the work that is yet to come. But I am like stuck, um, even with all this variety um, in this different context, I have been stuck this week with this idea that God would laugh um, to like mock us, you know, to be derisive. Um, and how do I reconcile like this with the whole tenor of scripture, right? And the tenor of scripture is, um, you know, that God loves us and God wants us to be in relationship with the divine. Um, and it's the story of how, you know, God has reached out to us and we have done our own things and like how this process has repeated like time and time again, right? But it's the story ultimately about God's love. And so I've been trying to like balance how these two um, ideas, kind of like God is the warrior too, right? Um, how God could laugh at us in a cruel way um, with this idea that God is like all loving and that love wins at the end of the day. And there's a couple of ways that you can uh, work your way through this, right? Like the first one would be to just totally double down and be like, listen, God is God. And if God wants to mock us or if God wants to deny us his grace or if God wants to, you know, like um, keep us at bay and like distance and all these things, then that is totally up to God, right? Um if God wants to say, no, you're not good enough for me because of what you've done, then that's God's decision. And I am just really uncomfortable with that. Um, I'm uncomfortable with a God who is defined by love that mocks and denies love. But in this thinking, right, at the end of the day, you say, listen, God is all powerful and God can do what God wants and humans are just depraved. And so this is what we get, right? Another way to kind of think about these kinds of verses is to um, express that sometimes true reality that instead of us recognizing that we were made in the image of God, that we try to put God in the image of us. And so if we were treated this way, if, you know, that we would respond in that way, right? So if somebody hurt us or somebody denied us, um, you know, and like ignored what we asked them to do, that we would just shut them out entirely, right? So there's this kind of like, we're making God more in our image than recognizing that we are made in God's image. And I think that you can biblically, biblically argue uh, both of those points and come up with a case that makes sense. But I see a thread um, through these verses where God is laughing. And that thread is that um, that when God is laughing at humans, it is because of our own inclination and desire to do what we will want to do, to seek our own desires, um, and to ignore God's way. And so when we choose to chase after things that we know are not for us, but we want them anyway, then we are like um, shutting out the ways that God calls us to live and um, how what God has wired us to be. You know, I know very few clergy who heard or felt the call of God and were immediately like, oh yeah, this is totally what I'm going to do. No, there's a whole lot of Moses moments going on where, um, where there's a bucket of excuses and a lack of desire to like unsettle ourselves and our lives from what they're doing to go do what God wants us to do. And it doesn't have to just take place in like a big way of like, you know, like being called to be a minister. I think there are daily things that we do where we choose our own desire over what we know to be what God wants for us and you know that would help us become the people who God has made us to be and God calls us to be and so it's not just like about giving up the big dreams that you have for yourself in order to do what God has placed before you you know like we do it in small ways too 
Like when we like tighten the grip that we have on what we have or like, you know, or, or what, how we want to spend our time. You know, like when we refuse to be generous, we do it. And when we turn our gaze away from people who we know are hurting and act like we didn't see them or like when we just don't care for each other when we act totally selfish and we don't even consider that our actions and our decisions um, and our choices have a impact on those around us you know so when we kind of stop doing those things we are being a part of bringing the kingdom of God here. And when we stop doing those things, we also help to turn mourning to laughter. And it's at this moment that um, our dreams align with God's. Because sometimes we have to just let go. Sometimes we just have to um, trust that God knows more, that God's ways are higher than our ways. Um, and we have to take a bad situation and make it good. And one of the ways that God has given us to do this is to be in relationship with one another and to laugh with one another. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we are thankful that you love us in all of our ways, that you love us despite the fact that we chase after our dreams and that we experience unnecessary loss because we insist on having it our way. We ask that you help to open our eyes and our hearts and our minds and our spirits to you, that you will help us to see one another through the lens of loving and caring and nurturing and that you will help us to just be attuned to how you are at work in the world. Help us to turn tears to joy and sorrow into laughter. Help us to bring peace in the face of anxiety and war and fear and help us be your love and your light and your presence in this world. It is in your holy name that we pray, amen. Now here you go again, you say you want your freedom. Well, who am I to keep you down? It's only right that you should play the way you feel it. But listen carefully to the sound of a loneliness like a heart. Drive you mad in the stillness of remembering what you had and what you lost and what you had. When
good to see y'all. Do you have a person in your life that every time you're with them, y'all just laugh like all the time over the smallest things? Aren't those great relationships? I have that with my brother. Every time he and I are together, we just laugh like the whole time from beginning to end over really small things that otherwise if I were walking by them in my life, I probably wouldn't laugh at them. But he and I will, will watch silly videos of dogs and cats getting into trouble and we'll laugh about that and we'll laugh about inside jokes and memories and looking back on pictures and we laugh at one another all in jest. But it's a really good time and I always feel so good after, <laughs> after we have a visit together. There are many reasons that we laugh. We can laugh um, being with someone and reminiscing like I do with my brother. We can laugh at something or someone. And we all know it's not kind to laugh at someone else at their expense. We can laugh because we're nervous or uncomfortable. One of my children, when he was really small and he would get into trouble, usually because he had been mean to his brother, he would always laugh a little bit because he was nervous. He didn't know what to expect. We can laugh in disbelief. If I told you next week you were going to get on a spacecraft and fly to Mars, you might say, ha ha ha, really? One of my favorite stories in scripture about laughing is the story of Abraham and Sarah and how they came to have their son Isaac. The Lord came to Abraham, who was very old, and said, you are going to have a son. And Abraham laughed so hard he fell on his face. He did. A couple chapters later, messengers of the Lord came to visit Sarah and said, you are going to have a son. She was also very old and she laughed and then God said, Sarah, why do you laugh? And she said, I'm not laughing. And God said, yes, you are. So they actually had like a comedic exchange. And then Abraham and Sarah have their son and they name him Isaac, which means he laughs, he will laugh. And in Ecclesiastes, it says, there is a time for crying and a time for laughing. Laughing is something that God gives us. It's a good emotional release. It can help us feel closer to people. It can help us feel closer to God. And it can just feel good. It can help us sleep better at night. It can help us smile and experience more joy. And these are all good things. Let's go to God now and give thanks for this. Gracious God, we're so glad that laughter is a part of our character and your character. Help us see the things all around us that can bring us joy and peace and a chance to laugh. We love you very much and we'll talk to you real soon. Amen. not to be, sun and stars and all thereafter, joined in cosmic harmony. Give us songs of joy and wonder, music making hearts rejoice. Let our praises swell like thunder, echoing our Make us instrument.
hands of peace. Turn our sighing into singing, music born of hope restored. Set our souls and voices ringing, tune our hearts in true accord.